Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, and welcome to morning prayer and communion here at First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Columbus, Ohio. This is the second Sunday after Pentecost. I am the Reverend Emily Corzine, Associate Minister. I'm joined this morning by Senior Minister Reverend Dr. Tim Ahrens, Minister of Music Kevin Jones, and Director of Christian Education Mark Williams. In this unsettling time, although we are not worshiping together in the same space, God's Spirit continues to draw all of us into community as together we seek comfort, guidance, and a holy purpose for our lives. We do know that the most loving and noble and sacrificial thing we can do is to worship from home until we can gather in person, and that is safe. We're glad that you're joining us for this service of morning prayer. You can find the materials on our uh, worship page on our website. If you're looking to help, if you're looking for help, if you're looking to grow in your faith or interested in being part of First Congregational Church in a more meaningful way, please check out our website at www.first-church.org or our Facebook page. Contact us and let us know. We'd love to hear from you. People of God, let us now turn our hearts toward the sacred. Let us worship God. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O God, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. As As it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. Again, we we welcome you to worship, and we reconcile ourselves to each other and to God by passing the peace of Christ. The peace of God be always with you. And And also with with you. you. Peace be with you. Hello, everybody. It's so good to see you again. Now, do you notice something different? There's two things that are different. One, I'm wearing a mask. And two, it's green. Can you see it? It's green. And if you look around, Reverend Tim has one, and Reverend Emily and Mr. Jones all have green masks on. Thank you, Janet. 
But here's the reason why we're wearing green. If you remember, last Sunday we wore white masks because it was Trinity Sunday. Now we're in the season of Pentecost, but it's now what we call ordinary time. And as Reverend Tim said, there's nothing ordinary about what's going on right now, right? So, they use the color green. Now, green reminds me of trees and plants and vegetables, right? Yeah, and they're growing. This is the growing season. So, we look at this season also in the church as a growing season. And that is because we have all this time to learn all the wonderful stories and all of the things that we, that we need to learn through Jesus' life. So, over the summer, we're going to grow. Now, I know you're going to grow taller. I'm probably going to grow wider. But we need to grow spiritually, too. And also, we need to learn some other things, too. Like you've already started. Like you already started to know that you're washing your hands every day at all different times because you're learning how to do different things to prevent COVID, right? Yeah, I know you're doing that. Keep washing your hands. And you're learning how to do some things that, of other things that you're not used to doing, right? But we can learn through that. And we can grow using our green collar. We can learn things how we can do the things that Jesus is wanting us to do, like loving each other and honoring each other and taking care of each other. So this summer, we're going to grow together, okay? So whenever you see green, remember, grow. And we're going to grow in God's love and in Jesus' love as well. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the wonderful growing season of all of the beautiful plants that are blooming, all the green that we see around us. May this be a reminder of your love and a reminder for us to grow in faith with you. In your son's precious name, amen. See you next week. Today comes from the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, beginning in the 18th chapter, the first verse. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a, a little bit of bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent of Sarah and said, Make ready three measures of choice flour kneaded and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and half and a calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they were there, and they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. <laughs> and Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say 
Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And the Lord said, Oh yes, you did laugh. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Let us pray. Holy God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may hear the words you have for us this day. Amen. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus tells about the 12 about to be sent out disciples, that the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Therefore, he asked the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. Jesus speaks metaphorically here. The harvest is those who are ready to hear and receive the word of the nearness of the kingdom of God. However, given our current context, praying for laborers to bring about a plentiful harvest might be taken literally. The coronavirus and subsequent travel restrictions and the rate of infection among migrant workers living in close quarters has left crops rotting in the fields. A ripe harvest will not wait. The crop gets picked, distributed, and consumed, or it dies and rots unused. A lack of workers disrupts the, ent the entire food chain, causing damage to those who are affiliated with it. But everybody needs to eat. So Jesus knows that a world without workers to share the good news is one in peril, one filled with rot one in which hunger runs rampant, one in which the bounty of the earth meant to nurture instead gets plowed under and wasted. Pastor Jill Duffield asks these questions. In all the turmoil and pain of these days, is there, in fact, a plentiful harvest ripe for picking? Or has our reluctance to go into the fields and labor rendered good fruit useless? Jesus sends out his followers with good news for the poor and the oppressed. He sends them out to rely on the hospitality of strangers and to preach and to teach and to heal. But nowhere in this Jesus harvesting is there room for selfish gain or exploitative practices. Right now, the harvest of those ripe to hear Christ's message of hope and justice ready not just to hear about the kingdom of, God, of, of heaven, but to see it actually come here on earth is all around. It is swelling on our streets of our cities and our towns across this country. Indeed, the abundance of people yearning and yelling and demanding the ability to breathe free grows by the day. Jesus says, don't go far. You don't need to go far to do the work that needs to be done. There is work close by, and people there are people in need of God's saving word. Jesus implores the disciples to be Christ's workers, ambassadors of reconciliation, peacemakers, my favorite, justice bringers. Justice bringers. This week, I found and, and reread the famous poem by Langston Hughes, in which he writes, what happens to a dream deferred. It is in that poem where the images of festering and rot and explosion happen. That crop of dreams that will not wait forever to be realized or harvested. If the workers don't show up to heal and cast out evil and dreams and longings and lives get thrown away or plowed under, all that sustains us will collapse, and none of us will survive, let alone thrive. We, as people of faith, we do know this. We do know that Jesus is among us here and now, and that the kingdom of heaven is near. We know what Jesus commands, and we know what the prophets say and what God requires of us. The harvest is ripe. What is needed now are the laborers. So just like the disciples, Jesus sends us out to proclaim the good news, to cure the sick, to raise the dead, try that one on, cleanse the leopards, and cast out demons. Come on along. And yet it seems as if Howard Thurman would write these words. We do not know how to do what we know to do, or how to be what we know to be. 
The harvest is so ripe for the life-giving, justice-bringing word of God, but many of us refuse to go into the fields and fail to be what and who we know ourselves to be. And the harvest, you know, it won't wait forever. It will fester, it will rot, it will explode. And as we wrestle with the state of our life together in this place in 2020, the undeniable centuries-long inequalities, the systematic deadly racism, story after story of black and brown lives, beloved children of God murdered by those who are supposed to keep the peace. For every member of our community, we, me especially, a white Christian in this place in 2020, we have to ask ourselves if we're willing to do the labor of the harvesting and the distributing of God's abundant crop of justice and love. Don't go far. There is work to do in the field. This kingdom harvesting work that Jesus is referring to is not easy, and there's a lot of risk. And we can't expect to be about casting out evil without some pushback. And we can't expect to heal deep, open, and life-threatening wounds without putting ourselves in harm's way or going into places that are perpetually inflicted. We cannot expect to cleanse the lepers from a safe distance. We cannot proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ from a soundproof bunker for personal protection. We cannot do any of this without willingness to listen to and fight for and walk alongside those who have long been oppressed. So don't go far. On the corner of Cleveland and Broad, down a few more blocks on the corner of Broad and High, in our living rooms or in our dining rooms, in our virtual classrooms, in our offices, there is good work to be done if we take up the challenge before us. But we're going to need a lot of faith and courage and endurance and mercy. We are going to need to extend and receive radical hospitality from strangers who may very well be angels among us. And we need all of the above, and then some, in order to go out into the fields of our current world And in our personal work and in our collective work, we can begin to bring the heavenly harvest of which Jesus speaks closer to earth. And that is the work of bringing about justice, which will feed us and sustain us all. May it be so. at morning prayer that all who are present lift up the prayers of those that are on their hearts. So as you are praying at home today, I want you to be saying the names of those that are close to you or that you have concern for, joys for. This is your time to pray. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Because he lives, 
we look to you for eternal life, knowing that nothing past, present, or yet to come can separate us from your great love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. This day we offer prayers on behalf of this church, the community, and the world. And I invite us to lift up prayers for individual needs and concerns and thanksgivings of this congregation, the members, family, and friends who are listed in Depart to Serve and whom we hold in our hearts in prayer. And I invite you now to lift up aloud or silently those needs and concerns and thanksgivings you have. Gracious God, we lift up Dewan Cannon and her mother today who were caught in the crossfire of shooting in her home, in her mother's home this past week. We lift up in great celebration Sharon and Glenn who celebrated their 60th anniversary this week. We lift up Will Nairot grandson of Bill and the surgery he has gone through and the treatment he's receiving now at Children's Hospital. We lift up this world today. We lift up each corner of the world today and especially those who are afflicted by COVID-19 and other diseases and other needs in their lives, the challenges of poverty, discrimination, racism in this country and across the globe. We lift up the LGBTQ community that faces this in so many different and difficult ways, the challenges of prejudice and discrimination. And for our African American sisters and brothers, who have borne too long the whip and disdain of poverty and mistreatment. May we stand with them, come to know them more deeply in our relationships, and grow together for the healing of all that is broken in our land and in our hearts. Almighty God, in Christ you have embraced all of life through the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Pour out your grace upon us that we may love all of life as you have loved us. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Eternal God, you created us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you join us this morning, there is a way to give at this time of the offering. Uh, if you go to the QR code that you'll find as a link in your bulletin this morning, you can share there. You can go to our church website and press Give and share there. Uh, you'll find other ways to share in the Depart to Serve leaflet as well. We share our stewardship of our lives and our gifts each week, each day, in the way that we live and give. I want to thank all of those who participated this past week in the Big Give. Thank you for going outside of yourselves to share with others. We also want to invite you today to give to the offering of the day. It is the Knight Perry Fund. The Knight Perry Fund is established in the Board of Trustees Endowment Funds and provide, provides support to members of this congregation 
who face particular hard times and needs. So if you're listening as a member today and you are faced with some very difficult times in this economic hard time, be in touch with us. We are here to support you in ways that might go beyond the normal ways that you can get help. So call me, call the church. The Knight Perry Fund is each of us giving to those of our membership that need. So I invite those who can support today uh, the needs of friends in this church uh, to do so. I can tell you as the one who administers this fund through the years, now over 20 years, it is so hard to step into the senior minister's office and ask for help. I can't imagine anything harder anything more heartbreaking. But because of you, we have a response as a community of faith. We surround people with love and support them with resources. So let us share generously with the Knight Perry Fund. Thank you. It's never too late to start over. We just sang a song, one of the great hymns of Christendom, written by our own Washington Gladden. But at the age of 76 years old, Dr. Gladden started over. He had just read W.E.B. Du Bois's book on the souls of black folks. And as he read this book, he was shattered by his misunderstanding of African-American people. He had heard the narrative that came out of Southern writers about black folk, and he realized he was wrong. He got on a train in Columbus, Ohio, and went to Atlanta, Georgia, to meet with W.E.B. Du Bois. He asked for his forgiveness for his misunderstanding for so long, and he started over. This is a time when we come to the table of God's grace that we need to start over. Each time we come, we need to start over. We're given a new chance. We're given new life. We're given a chance to fix what we've broken. Would you join me at the table? Gracious and ever-living God, in the fullness of your grace and your love, you receive us here in the spirit and the name and the presence of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless us as we come today, as we receive the gift of this holy 
sacrifice of life one more time as we start over in your love and your grace to be renewed for service in your name. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. When Jesus was gathered with his disciples on the night before his crucifixion, they were to desert him and one would betray him and leave him alone in his greatest hour of need, and yet knowing that, he took bread. And he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. After supper that night, he took the cup and poured it out and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the new and the everlasting covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink this, remember me. Gracious God, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and the cup and on each of us as we now come to your table of grace. May we receive these gifts one more time so that we can start over. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. church website and Facebook for updates concerning our faith community and how we will organize to help those in need during this time. Just a reminder, all worship will be online until further notice. No in-person worship. We encourage families to check out the info about free church camp this summer and the Depart to Serve leaflet. Online registration is now available. Please note all the, the uh, virtual studies and meetings that are being offered this week. Everyone is invited to participate in the 21-Day Racial Equity Challenge. It is sponsored by the Christian Education and Justice and Mercy Commissions. The 21-Day Racial Equity Habit Building Challenge is where you do one action, one action per day to further your understanding of power, privilege, supremacy, oppression, and equity. We will host a Zoom meeting each Monday for us to discuss what we have learned during this challenge in a safe place. You will find the link in the Depart to Serve leaflet. If you need to be in touch with Reverend Aaron's or Reverend Corzine for emergency pastoral care or name a prayer request, please call 614-733-4547. 
This number is listed in the Departure Serve leaflet. Just a reminder that your giving can be done through PayPal, Easy Tithe, or simply writing a check and sending it in the mail. No matter how you are giving, be sure to mark it for the mission of the week or to the regular church budget. If you have not done so, please like us on the First Church Facebook page. There will be numerous postings through this time for engagement, activities, and devotion. So please monitor your email, the church website, and Facebook page. We invite you to the virtual coffee hour after the service today. You will find the link in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just click on the link and it will take you to the coffee hour. We also encourage you to check on your neighbor and ways you may be helpful to them. Let us sing the closing hymn as we depart with a heart to serve. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. People of God, wherever you are, go out into the world in love. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.